Hi there, I'm Molly, and I'm a reading and dyslexia specialist. Today we'll talk about heart words. What are heart words, and how do we teach heart words? Let's get started. Heart words are high frequency words like the, to, his, was, of, from, and want. And these 100 or so words count for about 50% of the words we read and spell. And many of these words can be very tricky to learn to read and spell. The tricky part of the word is the reason these words are called heart words. Because at least part of the word is not decodable. So the student needs to learn that part of the word by heart. Since most heart words are at least partially decodable, when we teach heart words, we point out which parts are decodable and which parts are not decodable and the part that we should learn by heart. You've probably seen heart words displayed like this with squares and hearts under the letters. Let's take a look at what that means. When you see a square under a letter, it means that that letter is decodable. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Sometimes you might see squares in different colors. And when you see a heart under a letter, it means that that part of the word is not decodable. And that's the part of the word that you need to learn by heart. Let's look at the heart word two. When teaching this heart word, you would point out that the T is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It is T, but the O is O, and that's typically done with two O's, not one. So that's the part of the word that the student needs to learn by heart. When teaching the heart word from, you would put a heart under the O because the F and the R are doing exactly what they're supposed to and the M is doing exactly what it's supposed to. But that O is a uh, in the word from. U is usually the letter that says a. Uh, so the word's not F-R-U-M, it's F-R-O-M. So that's the part of the word that the student needs to learn by heart. So when teaching the word the, we would put a square under the TH and that signals that the TH is doing what it's supposed to do and a heart under the E because that's the part that the student needs to learn by heart. In the word of, none of the letters are doing what they're supposed to be doing. If you were to sound out the word of, you might say off and come up with the word off. And if you were trying to spell the word of, you would say uh, that's a U, mm, that's a V. So you must spell the word U, V. So this word we need to learn by heart. Let's walk through the process of teaching a new heart word. First, the teacher would use the heart word in a sentence, something like, I said yes. Then you might call on a few students to use the word said in a sentence. Next, you would count the sounds together with the class in the word said. S-ed. There are three sounds in the word said. Next, to add a multisensory component to the lesson, you might have the students use Elkonin boxes to push up a chip for each sound they hear in the word said. S-ed. Next, you would ask the students, what is the first sound you hear in the word said? And they would reply, s. And you would ask the students, what letter represents that sound? And the students would answer S and you would write the S and put a box underneath because that letter is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Then you would ask for the next sound in the word S. -e. The students would most likely reply E because E is 
eh. And that's when you would explain that that's the part of the word that we need to learn by heart. Because in the word said, it's not e, it's actually a i. And a i doesn't say eh. So that's the part of the word we need to learn by heart. Then you would ask them, what's the last sound you hear in the word s-ed? The students would reply d, and you would add the d and add the box under the d because the d is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Then the students would practice writing and spelling the word, they would practice reading the word, and they would write the word together with you in a sentence. Now, of course, just because you taught it doesn't mean they learned it. Learning to read and spell takes lots and lots of practice. So you would add the word said to your pile of review cards and go over them often. You can begin to introduce heart words very early in phonics instruction. That way, the students will start to really unlock the code of reading and writing. Let's look at an example of how this works. Let's say a kindergarten teacher explicitly teaches these letters, M, O, A, D, and G. The teacher teaches the sound and the letter formation. Then the teacher introduces these four heart words, C, the, I, and like. With lots of practice and teacher support, the students could be guided to read this sentence. I see the dog. And this sentence, I see mom. And this one, I like mom. And this one, I like the dog. Of course, learning to read and spell takes lots and lots of practice. So as you introduce new letters and new heart words, you constantly go back and revisit and review previously learned skills. Thank you so much for watching and for helping a child learn to read.